take a look at the truck assist starting grid. Fabian Coulthard out of pole positioning. Matty having uh, sewn up the last race. So we have a fair bit of pressure on him in this one, though. Came into this championship in seventh position. Had a 29th in the first race this evening. And then, of course, has backed it up with victory. So another good haul of points. He'll have Cam Waters alongside him. Will Davison and Scotty McLaughlin rode two. Scotty started position 23. Three wins so far for Shane Van Gisbergen out of the nine that we've had in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. There's Andre Heimgartner, position nine for the Ned Racer. The Uasa Batteries entry of Brody Kostecki also inside the top ten. Hasn't it been fantastic to get in touch with Will Power on the other side of the world? It's early morning for him, but he's going to have a sleep after this and just see how much he's enjoyed this form of racing around, of course, one of the if not the most iconic circuit that we have. Thomas Randall and Mark Winterbottom, 17 and 18. There's Jake Kostecki and Nick Perkat in 20th position. Jack LeBrock got caught up in some drama down the chase there. Todd Hazelwood from position 22. Jamie Winkup, also big drama. Jack Smith found the wall hard in race number nine. Anton Di Pasquale, unlikely to see him down there too often this season. Simona Di Silvestro has had her hands full over there in Zurich but she keeps punching away. And last on the grid for the final race this evening, a 14-lapper, race 10 of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. On your truck assist starting grid will be Rick Kelly. There's our race winner. So six different race winners out of nine races so far. That shows a pretty competitive uh, field that we've got going here. I like what Jamie Winkup said to you, Jess, earlier in the week. I like everyone, he said. I thought, yeah, this is a bit of a game, remember, in round one. And then he said after last week, and he woke up on Thursday morning, he was dirty because he was now starting to see those results. All the sims are getting better. All the competitors and competitiveness is getting higher. They do not like losing. Doesn't matter what, what form it is, these guys. They're getting new rigs, new steering wheels, new pedals, new computers, new graphics, <laughs> monitors. There's Wind Cup. Uh, he's been hard into the credit card, trying to make sure that he's got all the right gear as well. Mark Winterbottom for Irwin Racing on screen down in Melbourne for Charlie Schwerkolt. Mathis winner, Rick Kelly. He's had the saw out and made the homemade sim. Done a nice job of it as well, but he's even got some new gear as well. We had a lot of fun with him earlier in the week in conversation. They're racing at Bathurst. What an unbelievable location. Macaulay Jones, cool drive on screen. He's got his race face on there. Even the mouse looks fast. Chris Pither, Coca-Cola Racing, Team Sydney. That was Max's Jack. glasses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he sports them anyway, right? But he's got the safety goggles on. Right, what is it? It's, it's 20 past eight. That means his elbows are working so hard there must be sparks flying. <laughs> Todd Hazelwood, plus fitness entry. He drives for Brad Jones Racing, and he's done a great job of preparing that little rig as well. Chaz Mostert, car number 25 for Mobile One and Appliances Online, and he came in to tonight's round in a very strong position in fourth in the championship as the field lines up. This is the location where the Australian Grand Prix was held in 38, 47, 52 and 58. But we know it for magnificent touring car racing that began here in 1963 and a fine tradition. We're stranded under awkward circumstances all around the planet at the moment, but we're still enjoying our supercar racing and we're doing it with, through iRacing. And now we've got 14 laps of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series to round out our evening of competition. All of our regular supercar drivers joined by some superstars internationally, Will Power and Simona Di Silvestro, together with some Dunlop Super 2 drivers in Brody Kostecki and Thomas Randall. There will be two stops in this one. Check the lights up on the top left-hand corner of screen. Fabian Coulthard off the front row from Cam Waters behind him, then Will Davison and Scott McLaughlin. They've now done a lot of laps. They know what to expect. They've got cold tyres. Look at Van Gisbergen diving down the inside in the background, but a great job by Fabian off the line. Van Gisbergen made slight contact with Davey Reynolds, not as big as I think that's McLaughlin calling Jones shooting off. Yep. So Shane Van Gisberg and a ripper start. Slight contact with Davy, but no outcome badly for that. And a great start too for Fabian Coulthard. Fifth Up gear, 260 kilometres an hour on the run in there with a warm tyre. It'll be slightly down from a cold start. David Reynolds gets turned off turn two straight into the wall. This will trigger some chaos down the order. Van Gisbergen has a look up the inside of Heimgartner and his fellow Kiwi. He couldn't get the nose up there. So it's Coulthard, Waters, McLaughlin has now moved up into third spot. 
Did Reynolds survive all of the carnage and did everybody manage to get around? Andre was very wide through the metal grate up at Reed Park, but he managed to just wrestle it off the concrete wall. It's the shot looking at the crest. That's Alex Davison had that monumental shunt the previous race. Jack Smith's carrying damage. Anton Di Pasquale's tucked in behind him. It's Coulthard, Waters, McLaughlin, Davison, Goddard, Heimgartner, Van Gisberg and Kostecki. Will Power is ninth and then Lee Holdsworth. This is Kostecki in trouble with one of the Red Bull cars. I think it was Wind Cup who actually made the wall and Jack Smith as well. So Jamie's eaten more concrete tonight. So too is Jack. He had a big one in the previous race. Riding on board down Conrad Strait. Position number eight for Brody Kostecki. Yet again, he's got Shane Van Gisbergen in his sights. Ahead of them is Andre Heimgartner and Zane Goddard. Fabian Coulthard, a 2.2 second lead as he looks to complete the first of 14 laps. Down to Murray's. So a couple of them dive in early. Van Gisbergen's won. Brody's gone with him. And so too is Will Power. Oh, <laughs> that's a hell of a way to get in to pit lane and activate that pit lane speed limiter down to 50 kilometres an hour. Nice move, the Ned Racer of Andre Heimgartner. So this is for the first of two compulsory stops for this evening. In the foreground, it's Van Gisbergen. and Chris Pither in the background. Car number 56 is Kostecki. Will Power at the Verizon entry. For those that don't know, a big US telecommunications company regularly partnering Will Power in his IndyCar Championship Series. I'm Gartner, car number seven for Ned Racing and Kelly Racing Organization is on screen, car number seven. So Coulthard over McLaughlin, who stayed out. And Cam Waters, remember that there's the transit time through the lane, plus the time it takes to put the tyres on. Now, they do need a little bit more fuel than they were given to start with. So they were starting with 65 litres. They require 69, Matty, to be able to get this race done. But the reality is that you've got the time covered to get the fuel into the car, putting the wheels and tyres on. Goddard. On screen, car number 34, Zane Goddard is in sixth position for the unit and for Matt Stone Racing. That's the black and gold car in the foreground, and he's got the vastly experienced Lee Holdsworth behind him, who's been on the podium here back in 2009 in third place. 16 starts at the Bathurst 1000 for Lethal. And 09 up there with uh, Michael Crusoe, as you mentioned. He was ninth last year with Thomas Randall, who's fighting away in this race. And Thomas is in position number nine. So just a couple back from the truck assist Mustang of Lee Holdsworth. Our Pertec pit reporters, Chad Nalon, Jonathan Swan, watching on lap two. What do you got, guys? Well, we've got more guys heading to the lane. And <laughs> is that Gary Jacobson making the world's yeah. latest decision to avoid it? Uh, one of the big advantages, Jonathan, that may go unspoken about with the early pit stop coming on lap one is if we did get a safety car, remember back to Monza, mm. IndyCar style rule book means they could get a huge free kick. Exactly. So you want to pit before that safety car comes out. And the reason you're seeing drivers come in before the window is to avoid the traffic, just like race number two, Chad. So they're going to have a long way to, to run on this set of rubber. But I think what we saw from race two is track position is more important than how long this rubber lasts. So the basic strategy at the moment is if the safety car was to come out, a Vodafone safety car would certainly uh, be an advantage to those who have pitted on lap one and certainly all about keeping that clean air for those guys that pitted early. It's a good point because the rules in iRacing dictate that the pit lane closes. That does not happen in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship as we go back up to the top of the hill. Fabian Coulthard from his teammate Scott McLaughlin. They've got about half a second margin, first to second at the moment. They've not yet stopped, nor has Cam Waters, Andre Heimgartner, Lee Holdsworth. It's roughly about half the field at the moment. You go all the way down to Jack Smith, who's 13th in the SCT Logistics, Brad Jones Racing, Holden Commodore. And then first in the queue that has stopped is Shane Van Gisbergen. The first of two stops for this evening. Dunlop curb cam at the dipper. It's a wild ride through there in reality in second gear. It's just a little over 80 kilometres an hour. McDonald's fastest lap for Andre Heimgartner. Now, was that a, just a bit of background noise, or did he actually thump the inside wall there at Forest Elbow? 
Holtzworth in the foreground from Gary Jacobson, who just recently had ankle surgery. In reality, it wasn't virtual, and it had real pain, not virtual. And then car number 49 tucked in behind him. He had some virtual pain in that last race. He did. Right about here, in fact. So this is Thomas Randall, car number 49, who's driving for Sky Sands, but backing from Rusty French. And is that Sands rear wing? It is. So that's not going to be a particularly pleasant thing to drive at the moment. So a button needs to be pushed there in the stop. Resurrect the aero balance on that car. Van Gisbergen in the foreground. Then Brody Kostecki with Will Davison. Scott McLaughlin and Cam Waters have also gone into pit lane. So we saw the three that we were following dive in. Ahead of them, some of the race leaders have gone in. Bunnings trade, power pass, power play. On the inside here, Thomas Randall, the Sky Sands entry. Beautifully and cleanly done on Gary Jacobson. But then within the blink of an eye, they were all into pit lane. And to do that without a rear wing was impressive. <laughs> because in reality, if you tried to tackle that left-hander at the bottom of the chase, that kind of situation would be pretty gruesome. So Thomas was cheeky on the pit lane exit there, thinking he might be able to sneak around. And uh, under normal circumstances, the Motorsport Australia race director, Tim Schenken, briefs everybody early in the week about driving to the right of that line and there's a little plastic floppy there and if you were to do that in reality you'll get an immediate pit lane drive through penalty. Car number 34 down the inside and Chad was right before when he talked about Gary Jacobson making a late call to avoid stopping. What he's doing is exactly what Jonathan was talking about before whether it be in pit lane, pit lane entry, exit or on the racetrack the last thing that you need to do in virtual and real racing is tangled with somebody else if there's a way to avoid it. Speaking of tangling, Gary getting all crossed up on the exit out of turn four at the cutting. He's got a couple more spots. It's pretty wild back in the pack here at the moment, Matty. You'd want to get out of that, wouldn't you? So the first of these to pit, the first of the field to pit is Scott McLaughlin, the first in order I'm talking about. So Scott down in eighth position. He's your effective race leader at the moment. At the moment, one through to seven, yet to pit. It's got a bit of a handful, the yellow cover entry of Gary Jacobson. He's been the thick of it tonight. Will Davison's had a good night, but now he's spun around. Nowhere to go at the elbow for Will Power, except straight into the other Will. And quite a few others arriving down there on the scene will find trouble. Wow. So poor old Will Power comes flying down at the elbow. He found, finds the man who is runner-up to back in 2001 in the Australian Formula 4 Championship and could do nothing but slam straight into him. So big damage on the Verizon entry of an Indy 500 winner who's joined us this evening and is having an absolute ball. He had nowhere to go, unfortunately. He's been a great motor racing export story, Will Power, and this is a great battle. Thomas Randall and Zane Goddard at the final corner. Murray's corner and all locked up and sideways and trying to steal each other's road at the moment. And Thomas gets down the inside, gets it done. And before he left Australia, Will actually became the Australian driving champion, driving a Formula Holden, and then battled hard in Europe to make a name for himself. Got an opportunity in 2005 to drive a champ car, drove for Team Australia, and ultimately found his way into the Penske organisation and has had an amazing international career. So all credit to him. So, oh, big, big, big shunt into turn two. Now, was that Kostecki or no, I think it was Kostecki. Car 344 was. So Jake Kostecki. I looked up and saw the thing spinning like a top into the barrier there at turn two. BP Ultimate Replay tells a little bit more of the story. And so this is into Forest Elbow, Cam Waters and Will Davison. This is what tripped up Will Power, who has nowhere to go in the middle of the corner and, uh, and virtually rips the front off the car. So, well, I wonder if Jake Kostecki got a little bit of damage done to his car in that incident as well. There was one of the Matt Stone races came in. So our race leader at the moment, Todd Hazelwood, over Simona Di Silvestro, yet to pit. Great view of Mount Panorama from the chopper cam. forward to hopefully going back there in October 2020 for a resumption of play in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. We've had extraordinary racing there for the last decade or more 
Harvey Norman backing the Mustang being driven by Simona Di Silvestro this evening and they were long time supporters of Simona in the period while she was driving the Nissan for Todd Kelly and Kelly Racing. So car number 78 comes in for a stop. Now everybody down to position 22. Jack Smith has taken a stop but Chaz Mostert's actually the first in the field that's taken his two stops and as has Anton Di Pasquale. So strategy is important to manage here. Our race leader is McLaughlin. He's taken one stop and so Shane Van Gisbergen. And there's only three quarters of a second between them. So a nice clean Pertec pit stop there for Simona. She gets that done nice and easily. And cars number 99 and 25, Anton Di Pasquale and Chaz Mostert side by side in the run to Murray's corner. Chaz on the dirty side of the road, not the ideal approach line to that corner. He's got Will Power threatening down the inside here as well. Will also had the opportunity to test the Minardi Formula One car back in 2004, and Will gets tangled with Chaz Mostert on the run into one under brakes. Anton is an unwilling participant in all of that. More damage for the three of those guys, all of them looking bruised and battered. So that's going to have a pretty significant impact on Anton's position in the series and Chaz, both of which are front-running contenders coming into the round. And as you pointed out, both of which had already, already taken their second compulsory pit stop. So it was a clean run home for those guys operating on a different strategy to the likes of Scott McLaughlin and Shane Van Gisbergen. The mobile one entry is all battered and bruised of Chaz Mostert. Lachlan over Van Gisbergen, Brody Kostecki in third position at the moment. He's only just a whisker behind them. Oh, Todd Hazelwood thought about trying to make a move on Bryce Fullwood. So Bryce did an amazing job here in the Bathurst 250 last year, only to have that victory taken away from him for having done a quick lap on that last lap of the race. And he's earned his way in the middies car into the full-time main game field in 2020. McLaughlin, Van Gisberg and Kostecki, one, two and three, then Coulthard, Waters, Heimgartner to six, then Randall, Goddard, Holdsworth and Jacobson, that's the ten. First car that's actually done two stops is Will Power down in 22nd at the moment and a little nose to tail action there between Todd Hazelwood and Bryce Forward once again. Nick Perkat in this game too. Lap 7 of 14, our final race at Mount Panorama this evening, BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. Two compulsory stops have been completed by about a third of the field. Two-thirds yet to take their second stop. McLaughlin's the leader over Van Gisbergen and Brody Kostecki. It's a tight battle at the top. Action just recently on the approach into Turn 1. The BP Ultimate replay shows Will Power touching the back of Chaz Mostert. Ricochets to Anton Di Pasquale and Skittle all three cars off into the weeds and the run into turn one. And then drove away from the scene of the crime very, very quickly on board with Todd Hazelwood up here to turn one. It's a bit loose, manages to hold on. Remember, $1,000 for the overall round winner, thanks to Armour All, going to the chosen charity of our drivers. At the moment, the overall round leader is Shane Van Gisbergen, and he's driving for Wings for Life. Race. Uh, race leader at the moment is Scott McLaughlin driving for Camp Wally. Plus Fitness, Brad Jones racing entry, car number 14 on screen at the Dipper, second to third gear, and Todd Hazelwood's listening in the background. How are you tracking, mate? You're 15th at the moment behind Wind Cup. Yeah, mate, I can see the Gibby Wings sign clearer than anything. You wouldn't believe it, but uh, I'm a little bit annoyed. I was, uh, I was two spots in front of there, but uh, and I was in front of Nick, and then uh, I did a pass and I uh, just got pushed wide, so, so it's pretty easy to get contact and I just got pushed off, so I'm in a pretty good uh, run here though, so I might try and have a go at Wink Cup. Tell us when you can just how hard it is to do this. <laughs> I don't mind it. Um, I, I, I don't know, talk a fair bit with my engineers and stuff. Boy, as I say that, whoa, I just whoa, do a big whoa, slide. baby. <laughs> <laughs> good, Wink Cup's getting out of my way, that's good. I reckon you scared him. But <laughs> <laughs> I would be too if I saw that in the rear vision, rear vision mirror, but uh, no, all good. Uh, we're pressing on here. The, uh, the new equipment's doing wonders today, so I'm pretty happy. Good work, mate. And uh, we've got Nick Percat on screen here as well at the moment, and your teammate sitting in 10th position in the Dunlop Super Dealers entry, car number 8, the yellow Commodore on screen. He's only, oh, 75, maybe 100 metres up the road from you, so you might get him, Todd. 
and uh, we might have a chat to Nick at some stage as well. But you've got to get up there and try and threaten him and torture him a little bit. I want to see a little bit of ag. What do you reckon, Nick? Mate, is he? Yeah, he's into it. Uh, he actually helped me pass wing cut. We boxed him in and broke early. It was perfect. You're really entertaining the pooch in the background there too, mate. Uh, heart rate, pool 35. <laughs> I don't know, but it probably seems high for that bloke. <laughs> yeah, right. Nelson the Wonder Dog. <laughs> Jockey lab. That's, not, that's no way to describe Nick. <laughs> All right, side by side here for Jack Smith and Will Power. So we're looking further down the order for these guys. Will Power in position number 19. He's done the two stops. So those who have yet to finish their second compulsory pit stop, all of the top 16 at the moment. Jamie in the wall on the exit of the cutting. So car number 88 pointing in the wrong direction. Has not been a great night for J-Dub. And he's got the other wall as well. Now, I reckon uh, there was a move on for the lead as well because McLaughlin's gone to the lead while we were having a chat to the boys. Brody Kostecki's gone to second and Shane Van Gisbergen has actually gone back into third position. And uh, that's Shane just wandering into the pit lane now as we pick up the leaders. How about Jamie Winkup? Four times a winner here. Oh, Macaulay Jones in trouble. Oh, big time. He's headbutted the inside wall at uh, Forest Elba. Oh, you can see that coming from a mile off. That is one way to get rid of a supercar in your way. Oh, and another one. Macca is trying to hit everything possible here, and he's doing a very good job of it. <laughs> and here comes Jamie Winkup says, I'm going to get out of the way of all this. I'll end up in the air as well. I think there's one little bit of concrete there that either Macca or Jamie have not hit. <laughs> Poor old Jonesy. He's had a shocking run up there. Couldn't get the thing off the wall at the top and then got absolutely belted. Jack LeBrock comes in for his second stop for Super Cheap Auto Racing. <laughs> so the question is, when do our leaders... At the moment, McLaughlin, Kostecki and co pull the trigger on their second compulsory stop. It'll take them 25, 26 seconds to go through. They can take on fuel, as you mentioned, in that time, Crompo, without adding any further transit time. So they'll be looking to that 25, 26 second gap mark. At the moment, the gap between Scott McLaughlin, our race leader, and Shane Van Gisbergen, who has done his second pit, is 28.8 seconds. So it's getting towards that margin. Jack LeBrock has got a pretty handy record in reality at Mount Panorama. He was fourth in 2016. He's had five starts, counting last year, where he finished in 17th spot. Came into the game tonight, 294 points in 12th. Remember, he was a winner early in the game in race two back at Phillip Island. So he's done a nice job for Super Cheap and Tickford Racing as we go back and find Will Davis and Anton Di Pasquale. And we pick up Anton, who I think just rubbed the wall. Wilbur's got it all crossed up, motocross style. How did he survive that? Anton tries to pounce and does, because Will is turning hard right at the dry cleaner after that one. <laughs> that was... About as close as it gets. A big, big moment. That was unbelievable. I mean, that, it, that, that was happening in reality. <laughs> Oh, my goodness me. And we should point out with a bit of seriousness that uh, Erebus and Penrod have done a nice job tonight uh, honouring those who uh, gave their all in Anzac Day. Obviously, we're not having the march in 2020, and so both the cars, 9 and 99, are carrying that special livery tonight. So well done to everybody at Penrod Racing as Scott McLaughlin comes in. And Waters also in the monster car. I love how the uh, E-Series has just solved the problem of double stacking. Straight through them, virtually. So that was the answer to our question. Lap 10 out of 14 was when the leaders were deciding to have a crack at that second compulsory stop. It puts McLaughlin out in front of Shane Van Gisbergen. There is still four drivers yet to do their second stop. They are Brody Kostecki, Andre Heimgartner, Thomas Randall and Todd Hazelwood, our Pertec pit reporters, Chad Nalon and Jonathan Simon on lap 10 out of 14. What's the read, fellas? Uh, advantage McLaughlin at this stage. They timed that second stop beautifully. Brody Kostecki still the wild card here because he was between these two when the second round of pit stops came up. It was a really quick outlap though from Shane Van Gisbergen, but maybe just a slightly slower pit stop. Yeah, exactly. He was about one and a half seconds behind Scott for the lead and he was going purple 
through the oh. top of the mountain and here he is pushing to the absolute limit but so far we think Kostecki is going to fall behind in third once everybody makes their pit stops but he can overtake because he has some great raw speed unless these two have a crack at each other which is shaping up as a potential down at the chase it's a good battle and we've still got a little bit of time left so just over four laps remaining in this battle. Brody Kostecki is our leader at the moment. He's got a tiny margin over Andre Heingartner. So we're working lap 10 of 14. Let's just check it out. Brody Kostecki's actually just come into the pit lane out of the lead. We're going to do a full lap here with Shane Van Gisbergen. And on the right-hand side of screen is the race leader, Brody Kostecki. Wild card this evening, regularly driving in the Dunlop Super 2 Series. Got off to a ripping start in Adelaide, genuinely at the start of the championship season. Let's ride with Shane. Look, listen and learn. And he's got the eyes on at the moment, chasing McLaughlin. to the left-hander at Forest Elbow and in the foreground you can see McLaughlin and Van Gisberg and we're riding with Brody Kostecki. Thomas Randall's actually the race leader at the moment. He's got just a whisker under 10 seconds over Scott McLaughlin. It's shaping up as a great battle. We've got a little over three laps remaining now. 300 kilometres an hour is the peak speed here and they use this extra metre of apron to open up the turn in point and then you've got to get the front of the car in reality and in the iRacing game fully landed to be able to get some brake pressure on and then you've got to be able to find the exact right moment to be able to trail brake into that corner. Too much of it and you'll carry a lot of brake induced understeer through the left hander. This is the final corner at Murray's and a little bit of a puff of inside front locking for McLaughlin. It's a great battle involving McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen and Thomas Randall's now come out of the lead of the race into the pit lane for his second and final stop in car number 49 for Sky Sands. So this re reveals the true leaders of the race, one, two and three. Thomas Randall has rejoined in position seven. So that's the entire field. He's now done the second and final compulsory pit stop. 12 out of 14 here in race 10 of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. Great move from Brody Kostecki on Shane Van Gisbergen. These, these are our race leaders. It's Scott McLaughlin. Now Kostecki second. Van Gisbergen is third. All of the field has done their two compulsory pit stops. So this is flat stick to the end, Crompo. And Anton Di Pasquale on our BP Ultimate Replay has found trouble here on entry, we believe, into pit lane or on exit, is it? Mark Winterbottom comes shooting across and takes the front of the Penrite racer. And then Will Davison gets caught up in the back. And there's nowhere to go but to the left-hand side of Mountain Straight and into that concrete wall. He ended up in the pits on fire. So Anton's day is done. And Frosty ended up totally out of shape coming out of the pit lane. And that just tripped over Anton, who had nothing to do with it. So we've got a genuine battle going on now with a little over two laps remaining. And puzzled by what happened with Van Gisbergen because that was unconventional so he's either carrying a penalty or he just let him go by but out of turn two Van Gisbergen was not at normal race pace there so sometimes there can be intervention from eye racing and he might be carrying something from a little bit earlier on or just let his buddy by so Brody's been released somewhat and he's actually 0.3 of a second behind now this is a great battle between Heimgartner and Coulthard that's not easily done 
Andre had the right hand side of the car up on the curbing at the chase. It's 300 kilometres an hour. The cars are quick there. This is the battle for the lead. We're looking down the left hand side in the rear wing end plate on Scott McLaughlin's car. There's second place Brody Kostecki. Brody's been the setup wizard for all of these cars and drivers for the series thus far in the OASA entry. He's a wild card for this evening and he might pull off a wild move here because he's quick enough at the moment, lap speed wise, to actually threaten McLaughlin so much so that Scott has to cover as they make the run into turn two. Breaking from 260 kilometres an hour. Third gear out of turn two at Griffins. This is a great view of the underbody on McLaughlin's Mustang. It's a little kink through three and then a blind approach into four second gear little hump here in the road is just where you grab third gear and try not to have the back of the car get too upset and then this beautiful blind brow over the top of the hill where you grab fourth gear and dance it down to the metal grade at 200 kilometers an hour have a look at the margins to the right rear of the court the car to the corner of the concrete from the top of the curb to the concrete wall was just millimeters now this is game on. This is just like your Bathurst 1000. We get to the end of the day, the final race, the last few laps, and everything goes up a notch. Brody Kostecki is absolutely flogging this UASA Commodore. And Scotty had it crossed up through the right-hander in the approach to Forest Elbow then. And because he had it pitched sideways a little, it locked the inside front on the run down towards the elbow. Now he knows that Brody's a big chance to get a benefit from the toe here, so he's trying to shake him off the back. He's vulnerable. The Holden's tucked right in under the back of the Mustang and he has a bit of a look at him and that destabilises the back of McLaughlin who covers on the inside at the chase. Van Gisbergen could be a beneficiary if this gets too wild. On the direction change, that gear change is difficult there. The cars want to slide in reality and in the game. Murray's corner now and this time through it's going to be one lap remaining. 6.2 kilometres and a great battle going on between McLaughlin and Kostecki with Van Gisbergen in third place. This is awesome. Down to turn one for the last time tonight. Maybe a little push and shove. Amazing racing. McLaughlin, Kostecki, Van Gisbergen's well and truly in this game on the last lap. Up over the rise, mountain straight, up towards turn two. Look at Kostecki, he's so aggressive. Leans it out on the left-hand side. We'll try and sneak it in on the right, but McLaughlin's wised up to that. Van Gisbergen waiting to pounce. What a finish. Brody Kostecki, wild card for this series tonight. Now that's one of the passing spots that's now been closed off. So sometimes with cooperation from the preceding car, you might get up the inside of the cutting, but there was no gap. McLaughlin was wise to that one top of the hill he's got great pace down to metal grade he's opened up a margin McLaughlin but he runs it so close to the concrete wall on the exit look at his hands next to no wheel work going on as he tries to glide this Mustang over the top of the hill back to third back to second lines it up at the dipper he's giving himself a tiny breather Brody was quicker in the first third of the lap. He's lost a tiny bit of ground over the top. On the previous lap, McLaughlin got sideways in the kink. We pick him up at the elbow. He's got a bit of understeer at the elbow, McLaughlin, but it didn't hurt his corner exit speed. He's hung on. Equidistant margins between first, second, and third. McLaughlin, Kostecki, Van Gisbergen. He will get the benefit of the draft, Brody Kostecki. A wild card driver who's already got a couple of Dunlop Super 2 race wins to his name this year. Gets under the back of our dual Virgin Australia Supercars champion. McLaughlin covers. There's nothing in it. They make a bit of contact through the left and right hander. McLaughlin's barely got this thing covered. They make the run to the final corner. Scotty parks it in the middle of the road. He might just hang on. He glides on the brakes to get there. He just gets it's it done, off. but he whacks the wall. Oh. And Kostecki is the winner. He locked it up and whacked the wall, McLaughlin. Brody Kostecki is the winner from Scott McLaughlin and Shane Van Gisbergen. And Brody Kostecki, 150 points with about 50 metres of racetrack to run out of 6,213 <laughs> has pulled off a race victory. McLaughlin couldn't believe it. What a turn up. 150 points and 100% commitment from Brody Kostecki on that last lap. It had everything, just like real life. That was a breathless lap of Mount Panorama Bathurst. What a victory for Brody Kostecki. Scott McLaughlin still can't believe it. That last 10 metres cost him.
bounced into the wall on exit of Murray's corner. Still managed to hold on to second spot. Shane Van Gisbergen finishes on the podium. <laughs> Just incredible. <laughs> Watch this. So unbelievable viewpoint. iRacing gives us some more amazing angle, angles. This is a wild dive down the inside. There's a bit of a touch on now. I'm wondering what the viewpoint is going to be in the bunker in Queensland on this one. Because it looked as though there was some contact. It doesn't matter, it was great racing. Although McLaughlin's not going to be thrilled about it. He had his hands in the air and he had a wild finish in Matagi in the E Series IndyCar race earlier in the week in Japan. So he's already seen some contact this week. It's been indicative of the kind of stuff that we've been seeing. Okay, so deep breath, BP Ultimate results, Mount Panorama, race number 10. And Brody Kostecki, unofficial inverted from uh, Scott McLaughlin, followed by Shane Van Gisbergen, Ooh. Cam Waters and Andre Heimgartner, Fabian Coulthard, Thomas Randall, Gary Jacobson, Lee Holdsworth, Will Power, the top 10. What a wild race, Jess. What a wild race indeed. Crompo, that was absolutely <laughs> as if it were real life at Mount Panorama. I sweat it up. <laughs> indeed, the intensity, the heart rate was right up there. Let's talk to Scott McLaughlin.